<laughs> yes, excellent. Um, my name, welcome to The Fringe of Reason, presented by Edinburgh Skeptics. Um, I'm Stephen, I'm one of the committee, and I'm really excited to be introducing our speaker tonight. Um, Joanna Bryson is a reader in computer science at the University of Bath. Her main area of research is artificial intelligence, and particularly exciting for people around my age, because she was responsible for the design of the first Lego robot, <laughs> which was the best Christmas you can just tell the people in their early 30s. <laughs> this was the best Christmas present I ever got. I had to share it with three of my, two of my brothers. My sister wanted a doll that year and wouldn't join in. Um, and then we fought over it, but we made some really awesome stuff with it. Mainly involved in getting it to draw on the floor. It was awesome. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, she's going to be talking to her on Can Robots Be Conscious? Um, the Lego robot wasn't conscious, but it was cool. <laughs> Great. Thanks very much. So uh, I have to admit, I was not the one who designed the Lego robot. I was just one of the people who researched on the intelligence and the usability of the intelligence. Uh, but, but anyway, I won't take so long. As much as I appreciate that's probably the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> because it's a lie. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so, uh, right, you know what this is about. Uh, and you probably, how many, has, has anyone, I'll, it's a terrible question to ask, but I'll do it anyway. Has anyone not done sort of a skeptics in the pod, science cafe, that kind of thing? Has anyone not gone to one of these before? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright. It's a bit more interactive than, than other kinds of talks, and I'm going to force you guys to talk at the beginning, but I promise I'm not going to be one of those people that just sort of says, oh, you know, what is the answer? But I will at the beginning. So the deal is, just at the beginning, if you want to know whether or not a robot can be conscious, you need to tell me what consciousness is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about robots, but I want to know what you guys think consciousness is before I tell you whether or not they are conscious, okay? So uh, I'm happy to pass the, the microphone around, or if you guys just want to shout out. Is it something to do with Deepak Chopra? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I'm going to take a couple minutes on this because I want you to really think. What, what, would, what, what do you think is the most important part about consciousness? Awareness. Yeah. Awareness, right. Sense, yes. sense of self. Sense of self. Self-awareness. Yeah. Self yeah. that, that's that's a quite a popular one. Good. Any other theories about what consciousness is? You can't sit down if you don't tell us what you think consciousness is. I'll pass the Turing test. Ah, passing the Turing test is consciousness. Interesting. Do you guys know what the, con the Turing test is? Yeah. There are spaces here. So if you talk to a robot and you, and you can't see it and you don't know that it's a robot, you can't tell it from a person, that's the Turing test. All right. Any other, any other big important things about where you... So what we've got so far is self-aware, and when you talk to it, you can't tell you're not talking to a person. Reasoning. Reasoning. Well, that's probably part of... Well, no, actually, if it was reasoning, then you would know it wasn't a person, right? No. Um, <laughs> Something that either accepts or questions its existence. Accepts or questions its existence. Okay, I don't have a slide on that one, but... Okay, that's <laughs> um, what about, I might be able to bend that way. Yeah? What about emotions? Emotions, yes, another big one. Yes. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I, I, I think that's a, that's a good... The huh? ability to be wrong about things. The ability to be wrong about things. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> actually, yeah, I absolutely like that. Mm -hmm. You'll see why later. <laughs> yeah? Willingness to believe in a supreme being. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, yeah. So this, that, now this is almost going into the pub time already, but, but uh, the ability to think superstitiously, we are skeptics here, so I'll go ahead and leap right ahead and say that may be uh, fundamental to the human-like intelligence because of uh, theoristic reasoning. Uh, uh, reasoning without you know, being able to be wrong, but also having time to finish your thoughts before you get hit by trucks. Um, yes? To be able to distinguish between self and other. Self and other, yes. That's part of the self-awareness, but you're right. That's a very fundamental part, and that's something. Uh, so, so do you, I'm going to pick on you. How old do you think a child has to be before they're conscious then? Um, in the first, in the first year, they will become. Conscious. They'll become. They'll start getting a sense of self. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I picked on you guys too long. I'm going to start doing what I like best, which is puff. Uh, all right. So here are some popular things of consciousness. We'll see how many of them we've come up with so far. Um, maybe I should have taken that thing. So I really have to bend down. Do, who had the? No, maybe I don't. Okay. Care. 
Don't worry about it. Okay, where are we? So Steve. consciousness is self-awareness. The number one popular thing uh, to think consciousness is. Uh, consciousness requires language. You guys didn't mention this really, but some people say it's not conscious if it doesn't have language. I have no idea if this is new, do you think? No? No, I think I have to set that up. Alright. <laughs> Worth a try. Alright. Uh, consciousness is the root of ethical obligations. Alright? Now, this is really weird. Uh, most people won't just come up with it in a spontaneous situation like this. Sorry, you guys back here. I'm nice. hiding behind this thing. Uh, you, it's this, usually people, they have to listen to people like me or some other sort of functionalist for a while before something starts bothering them. And then when they get down to it, they sit there, and I've literally had a guy in a car say to me when he was driving to go pick up a functionalist from the airport, the problem with you guys is that you want to remove the, the idea of consciousness from ethics. And, and so that it turns out that's pretty, oh, is that going to, oh, I just put an I don't know why right now. <laughs> Thank you, then. <laughs> so let's, let's just keep going. Uh, okay, then it starts getting weird. I don't know if you've heard of Stan Slajahaney, but um, he's a researcher who actually is doing some very cool stuff. But basically, you start getting, uh, you know, if you want to get to nature and science and the big science rooms, you have to start saying things like, uh, Consciousness is a special pattern of activation. It's a special kind of energy and we can try to find its signature and then if we make the signature happen in the computer, the computer will also be conscious. Okay, another one like this right now that's uh, very popular uh, by Tononi. Consciousness is a special sort of information integration. So we know the brain takes lots bits of information in and somehow it simplifies it and if only the robot could simplify information in a similar way, that it would be conscious. Alright, so these are some of the current popular versions. Now I'm going to do my very harsh, uh, I don't know if the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do my now. I'm gonna do my harsh uh, 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 assessment of these. Um, uh, this is what people really like in theories of consciousness. My experience will never understand it. They love saying this. I was first struck by this when I was doing a postdoc, and the other postdocs. This is at Harvard in psychology. They're saying we'll never understand consciousness. Why? You're you're a postdoc. It's not your job as a scientist to say we can't understand something. Or, this is the other one, we'll understand it, but not in my lifetime. <laughs> Alright? I can't believe it. They'll say, on one minute, we know nothing about consciousness, which I don't agree. And then they'll say, we won't understand it in a hundred years. And I'm, why? why? Why would you have that problem, right? If you don't know anything about it, then you can have a breakthrough at any moment, and then it just can all be clear. But people want to believe that they can understand it. Alright. <laughs> this is one of the usual. <laughs> I have a quantitative scientific measure of consciousness, but it will take 60 years until computers get powerful enough that will check if I'm right. I've, I've heard him give a talk. He's extremely popular right now. He just got millions and millions in, in collaboration with a bunch of other people from the U.S. government to replicate the brain. People love that. <laughs> oh, and then the other, the all popular, basically we get down to it, only humans are conscious. And whatever you say, Nothing else is conscious, and, and you can't convince me otherwise. All right, you can see why I like doing this talk to skeptics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and not just criticize other people. I'm actually going to tell you what I think, so you guys can criticize me too by the end. Um, but I'm going to start out with, with, with uh, giving credit where it's due. A lot of the way I think it was affected by Dan Dennett. Um, and one of the things he points out is that the term consciousness is, well, like all language, it's co-evolved with our culture. So we were trying to get a hold of a concept that was important. And there's no reason to think there's one psychological thing that consciousness is. Consciousness could easily be some kind of an aggregate concept that once you take all the pieces apart, uh, it'll turn out that some of them are like totally different parts of the brain. Or maybe some of them aren't even in the brain at all. They're just part of culture. They're, they're part of a set of beliefs or something. So there could, all the things that we've been talking about could be multiple different phenomena, right? And so that, I think that's quite like, like light. You know, this whole thing about light is both a particle and a wave. You know, for thousands of years, people, you know, thousands, probably longer than that, they thought they knew what light was. And then all of a sudden in modern physics, when you're trying to say, yeah, but how does it work? That was when people started saying, oh, look, you know, there's actually multiple things that are kind of light. Okay. <coughs> All right. So yeah, I don't know. How to, yeah, but when you say, oh, it's the, all these things, when they start saying, you don't know what consciousness is, you're just pretending to know what it is, 
Everybody knows what consciousness is, and light, we all know what light is, but we don't know how it works. Okay, this is a bit of a jump in my talk, I'm going to admit that, but this is one of the popular views. You guys have actually not been to argue argumentative yet, so far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see how that goes. This is one of the ideas of what is consciousness. It's the thing in you that sort of sees out your eyes and figures out what's going on. All right? There's something in your brain that's doing that, that's using you as a vehicle and is somehow figuring out stuff. That's a very common like childhood concept of what is consciousness, right? When the little man in your head is awake, then you're awake. Right? Right? Like I was. The, um, <laughs> so, but this doesn't work because then, of course, well, what's in the little man's head? Okay? Or the little woman's, if you're female. Uh, uh, it can't be that there's an infinite number of people inside of other people's brains looking at the projection on the screen. Um, sorry for the computer science version there. Uh, whatever it is to be conscious, must be composed of non-conscious elements, okay? Just like people aren't made of lots of little people, right? And chairs aren't made of lots of little chairs. Right? It's got to be made of non-chair elements, a chair does, and, it, and consciousness needs to be made of unconscious elements, right? Yeah. Um, this is back to the, the you're a million robots kind of done thing. Right, nothing inside you is conscious, you are. Only you are, <coughs> right? Okay. Okay, now here's another do you guys want to argue already, or shall I keep going? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this is, uh, I just call it a hypothesis. It's more of an assertion that, that I forgot who made it. I think Axel. If you really understand something, you ought to be able to build it. All right? So I haven't talked much about robots yet. Well, now let's start talking about it. This actually is not a robot paper. Sorry, it's this guy's. These guys actually wrote this about for AI in general. They're actually game AI, game, game AI researchers. But it, it applies. It's one of the most recent, best cited paper for like how do we build consciousness. And this is what they think. They say, look, consciousness isn't just one thing. Here's all the pieces, and you get more and more and more conscious as you go. And I, yeah, my, my PowerPoint doesn't do any of the numbers, so I had to fake those. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually keynote mapping. Okay. <laughs> um, where are we? So the first few stages are completely weird. With computer scientists, how many people here are not in any way calling themselves a computer scientist? Okay. Alright. How many are calling themselves a computer scientist? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, um, so you need to know, computer scientists are, are very anal. <laughs> and so, so this guy, the body stage is basically, uh, like, it's like uh, in Genesis, you know, before there was anything, before they separated, like, earth and sky or something, right? It's like, I don't know what the point of that one is, <laughs> but, but, but the isolated one is when you can, when you have a body. It's like a robot, like you know, like that you could buy, like like your Lego robot if it didn't have the Lego brain in. So if you just built a, a, a robot out of Lego bricks, just regular bricks, and you said, "Look, mom, I made a robot." That's what isolated would be. Decontrolled is like, okay, you've got a sensor, you've got eyes, and you've got actuators, you've got motors, but they're not connected. Okay. <laughs> So this is extremely low levels of consciousness. Let's get into stuff that's more interesting. This is the first thing I would actually call a robot. Okay? When the sensing is connected to action, you act in response to perception. Then I say it's intelligent, and then I call it a robot. Okay? There is also other AI that responds to stuff that happens, for example, on the internet. That's not a robot, but, but it would still be this basic level of intelligence. Okay. Adaptive. Everybody thinks it's better to learn than to react. Um, well, I guess reacting is a necessary precondition, so that's all right for me. Okay, this is when we're getting closer to what I actually think. <coughs> Attentional. Whoever said that back there, I totally agree with you. That's to me the main thing, this attention thing. But basically, notice you aren't really conscious, or at least put it this way, it's more conscious to be able to be unconscious. Right? If you don't have unconsciousness, what, what is consciousness about? All right? So attending, that you're attending to some things and not to others. That's, you're starting to get an idea of what, to me, that's the fundamental piece. But not to these guys. I'm telling you someone else is doing right now. <laughs> their, their next thing, notice, this is still sort of about unconsciousness. They, they're executives, the AI, now imagine, Runner, we can build this stuff in robots. So robots do have multiple conflicting goals that you can only attend to one of. So they're, they're sort of at this point thinking about agency. All right. Um, 
for some reason, and I know that someone brought up emotions, so I don't mean to make you feel bad about this. <laughs> for some reason, they now put emotional as higher than all the other stuff, and this is the first one to say, okay, now we're getting human-like. All right? Now, I don't see that because uh, basically, if you're executive and you're an animal, so if you have multiple conflicting goals, you can almost certainly describe it as emotional. Right? The emotions almost line up with goals. So, so it, it, the, the most basic emotions are basically excitement and depression. And, and those pre, uh, phylogenetically, in, in, in the order of evolution, those things are in, in more simple animals than have neurons. All right? You already have the neurotransmitters that increase activation and decrease activation because you've noticed something in the, in the environment. So first of all, I don't think you need to be human to have emotions. And secondly, um, well, I guess that's the main thing. I don't, I, I don't know why this is suddenly the human life part. But anyway, that's what they said. <laughs> um, and it's quite common. Again, people don't always think about emotions. Um, self-consciousness, okay, yes. Ever-popular self-consciousness. Um, but I, you can think about this as where awareness about the self. So you can, of course you have to have awareness first and that you're aware of yourself. Okay, I'm going to use the AI abbreviation K for knowledge because we're going to start doing this. Empathic is when you know about others. Again, I don't even know what it means to know about yourself without knowing about others, but this is the thing they put together. Um, let's see. And then social is to know others know about you. All right? And I do agree with this. This is actually some very big people right now, like Robin Dunbar and Tom, Michael Tomasolo, talk about the number of times you can do hops about this. So I don't know if you've seen this, Robin Dunbar, this is a good fringe uh, thing to say. Robin Dunbar wrote a big thing about how Shakespeare's the greatest genius ever because his characters can do like five hops, which most people only do three or four. And then that means he had to be able to do six because he was reasoning about his characters. <laughs> so his characters are better at this kind of thing than we are. <laughs> then uh, that's why we get some engagement. That, that's that Dunbar's story of Shakespeare. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, this is really, okay, sorry, I, I thought about changing that. Oh, there wasn't a, no, anyway. Uh, human-like. So they, they consider human-like intelligence to be intelligence that's extendable by using the internet. I, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then they, they speculate about that you could have a super consciousness. So once you build an AI that they can kind of link together, then it would be super conscious. I actually agree that this is an amazing thing, but I don't think you can separate this from, from human intelligence either. I, I actually think that we're more conscious because we have language, because of these concepts, because we're using each other's brains. So that probably pre-existed the internet by a few million. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I don't, I, I don't mean, to, again, I don't want to just ridicule these guys. I, I hold these guys up because they're doing a good job of trying to take it apart. And for computer scientists, they thought hard. And, and uh, <laughs> 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 I, you know, they don't have the, they don't have the same background as some other people. And I, I think this, this is, is really a useful set of things. I don't think it's a straight line. And whenever people try to figure out these straight lines, you can almost always think of exceptions about moving them back and forth. But at least we get some of the components. Yes. Um, the, the thing that struck me there was um, having done a little bit of um, evolutionary biology it's mm -hmm. kind of, and history of science it looked like a ladder a ladder of progress um, that, and that, that kind of turned me hmm there's something I don't believe here yeah, I'm not that, sure what it is but then I'm not, uh, not that's, part of that's the absolutely how they set out they wanted to be able to go and look at other people's AIs and say how conscious is it so there, this is going back to this idea that consciousness isn't just one thing and I think that's a good question it's a good insight but the idea that, I mean, at least they tried. They said other people can fix it. Very good concept of science, right? At least if you put something out there, other people can adjust it. That's what science is about. That, again, is part of the difference between science and religion. Uh -huh. uh, at least in concept. Of course, religions keep improving themselves, too. Uh, <laughs> but, but quietly. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Your point 10. Uh, intellectual tema. Do, do you need an internet? Is a book not good enough? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I don't know what the, why they said that. I, 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 uh, no, but I, it, and I do think, I, I, maybe I'm, I have, it's a, it's a fairly short, it was originally encompassed there, it's a fairly short paper. So I, maybe I'm not quite entirely getting the, the distinction between the multiple strings and the human-like here. But, but I do think it is actually fundamentally human-like that we exploit the intelligence that comes from our culture. All right. 
And that, again, okay, well, let me show you. Let me show you. The next slide, I think, is my theory, and then it'll be easier for me to talk about this. All right. So, you know, I think it's my own consciousness. So, fundamentally, I think it is a form of attention. All right? And it's sort of a name that we've gotten for the feeling you have when you're aware enough to learn how to learn. Okay? Now, I have about six or seven or eight slides about this in more detail later on, but basically, uh, if you take a longer time uh, when you're doing a task, um, which you don't choose to, you know, basically there, there's these things called reaction times that you can measure and they have to do with how quickly you do tasks. If you, if you take a longer time, then uh, you might notice that there's something more complicated you need to be able to do. If, if, something, if the rules change or whatever, you pick up on that. So you, you seem to be doing a meta level of learning and it seems to correlate with when you have, you would report having attention. So, so, so a lot of what you think, you would think that you need uh, intelligence uh, to do. Well, you do need intelligence, but there's an awful lot of psychological little tasks they give people to do that they do just as well if they report afterwards that they noticed what was going on or if they, if they report afterwards, oh, I just push the buttons. Right? So there's quite a lot of things you can do without being conscious of exactly how you're doing it. But you can't, again, for, for reasons that, again, I don't know if I want to bring up in the, <laughs> the UK, in terms, including animal research, but if you want, ask at the end and I'll, and I'll show you those slides. Uh, it does seem like uh, um, that it's, just, it's, a, it's what needs to be done at the point where you're attending is you need to be learning uh, very, more complicated representations. Sort of. Anyway, let's go. So to me, that's the most fundamental thing, that feeling that you get of, of, of being in the moment. You really are in the moment, or at least you're, you're, you're putting a particular kind of attention at a problem so that you can learn it. Uh, uh, you, you, you have more learning resources on that part of the problem space. So what is language? You guys didn't care about language, but I will say it, 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 it helps, <laughs> all right? So the point is, and we've already been talking about this a little bit, culture accumulates concepts. So we, our history, our books, all of our ideas help us um, find things that help us to reason, all right? So it helps us give, you know, our parents hand us on a plate, our schools, our, our television, hand on a plate, things that actually, if you, if you pay attention to this, then your life is going to go a little better, then more things are going to make sense, then you're going to be able to make better predictions, all right? And you can think of culture as accumulating those over time. Some people even talk about culture e evolving the way uh, biology evolves, well, that's, again, slightly controversial. But anyway, so that's an important thing to do, but I don't think it's the basic machinery that's in the animal. I think that's something that, that, that's just useful. And then self, to me, is just one of those concepts. So while everybody says self-awareness, that's the thing that I think is what matters. I'm going as, as someone who's like going to build robots, <laughs> I'm going to say that, that that's just another thing that we've got sort of free writing um, because people come up with the fact that it's useful to reason about yourself and to plan for yourself. Now, I would argue that actually we're incredibly bad at self-awareness, right? And we all know this, right? Hey, it's, it's, it's Edinburgh. I could do like Burns, right? <laughs> is that, is that, do you know the Oaks of Laos? <laughs> no, right? Yeah. I, I forget. Somebody probably knows it better than I do. <laughs> but if we could only see ourselves as other people see us, <laughs> right? The, um, you don't know most of what you do. That, go back to the unconscious thing. You, the vast majority of what you do and how you do it, you have no idea. You don't have a, a conscious access to that, to that. Why? Probably because if you considered every single possibility, you would make mistakes you, or you would take too long, right? So you're focusing on the things you need to focus on. Again, it's a little fluffy, but... Uh, <laughs> and, but anyway, once you get to the point, once our uh, culture has evolved that we got to the point we have, where we have this idea of self, we don't get it very well, um, and, we, and we have to be pretty old. I, I don't agree with the person who said you have to be your self-conscious at the age of one. You, you're starting to get the feeling there's stuff you can do, but I think there's a lifelong disengagement for your parents because your parents tend to know what you want and be able to handle it faster than you do. Right? So you have, you have real difficulty figuring out the self-other distinction, especially with your parents. Less so your siblings are just in the way, right? <laughs> but, okay. <clears throat> so, okay, why is this not, okay, besides the fact that I don't feel like I made that particularly clear, <laughs> why, why does this seem like 
uh, a hard thing to communicate that oh consciousness is just this, this piece of learning where you where you focus and whatever. I think uh, part of it is because of this cartoon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> Ethics. I think <laughs> part of why people don't want to think, I could be wrong, and there's also a lot of things about identity, but I like talking about ethics, so I'm going to talk about ethics briefly. Um, remember that I said something about this accumulated thing. There's, this awareness is highly linked to ethics, and because I have been previously criticized, I decided to go ahead and do a slide about this, um, rather than doing other slides about the linking um, so, okay, what is a moral agent? A moral, ag a moral agent is something that's responsible for their actions, okay? So basically, in order to be a moral agent, first of all, you have to have a choice. So that's, what, that's the definition of agent in philosophy. Um, and then secondly, you need to know which choices your society says are it approves of, all right? So all this is about attention. If you're asleep, right, or if you're insane, or if you're dead, that you, then you aren't considered normally, well, okay, actually, almost everybody on the planet thinks that dead people still have effects on the world. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not aware and you couldn't see something, don't, they don't consider that, uh, that, that you're responsible. So there's, this is a very close link between being a moral agent, being responsible for your actions, and being conscious, right? And secondly, moral patience, so those are things that you have obligation towards, are things that suffer, right? So, and, and actually, this is quite nice, it's from animal welfare research. What is suffering? It's, it's not just pain, right? You can have uh, surgery with anesthesia where you experience the pain, but you don't remember it, and it doesn't affect your behavior, and that's considered not to be the same as suffering. Suffering is like if you put a pig in a small pen, and it goes insane and starts self-harming, and even if you put it back out of the field, it doesn't know what to do, right? So that's, that's the animal welfare. Right? Okay, so now let's, we already started talking about this with children. At one point, did children become moral agents? At what point are children moral patients? Well, they're moral patients almost immediately, right? Um, in fact, that's a big thing that I'm not going to touch. Exactly when did they become moral patients? But uh, when are they moral agents? Well, it's sort of gradual. And, and there's, the parents are also responsible, if, even if the child does something wrong. So there's a, sort of a trade off there, right? Uh, up to some age, the, the parent has some, has some issues about the child's behavior. Okay, what about animals? Okay, normally we only think of animals in terms of being moral patients, but again, well, we say that if we're sitting around and, and we're trying to be intellectual, but actually, if your dog poos in the carpet, <laughs> you think that animal knew how to not do that, and it did it because I locked him in and he was mad he didn't get to go to the party or whatever, I don't know, right? <laughs> and so, so we consider the dog to be bad, right? So I think that, and I don't think this is only something that happens with dogs and cats and stuff that share, we share our lives with. And of course, some people attribute more awareness to their dogs and cats than they have. But, but dogs and cats pretty much know that pulling on the carpet pisses you off, right? <laughs> so they, they, they pretty much know that. But anyway, also if you look in primate, um, not, not even primate species, we can see things like norms that if you don't follow them and another monkey catches you, you, you get beaten up. Right? So like, for example, having sexual access when you're not the, the dominant male monkey or something. Right? So there, there's, uh, but even there's reports of dominant male monkeys beating up subordinates too much and the rest of the troop uh, mobbing them. So, so they even sanction against the most powerful ones. So, so it may be that there's moral agency out there with, with animals. The environment is currently a trendy uh, moral patient. Okay, are we doing permanent damage to the environment? But you wouldn't say uh, it's a moral agent. It doesn't have a choice. Nobody thinks the environment has a choice. Okay, okay so, robots. What do you think? Can it be a moral agent? Can it be a moral patient? Yes? It's a gradient. There isn't a yes or no answer to any of these questions. It's a stepwise <coughs> increase of consciousness, of self-awareness, of all of these items depending on what you want at the end of the whole process. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Any other any other things people want to say or you want me to I actually don't know how I'm doing for time. Does anyone have a thought? Oh wait, I have a thought. okay. So I, I think I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I, I have time for an to any other I don't want to say anything right now to that but I think that was really good. Yeah. Anyone else? 
fun to talk about. Um, yeah, so kind of the law of Actually, robots, don't forget, uh, I was just talking about moral agency, and I said that's part of the reason that people freak out about consciousness. So I, I, I probably didn't make this transition perfectly clear. I gave you a bunch of things I thought it were going on with consciousness, right? Which was mostly about the awareness and being able to learn to learn, right? And then I gave you a bunch of stuff that's about why do people confuse ethical obligation and moral subjects, moral subject to So if you're either an agent or a patient, you consider a moral subject. So, and I said this is what people get confused about. Right, so computers, I actually have an old talk that's called uh, Consciousness is Easy but Learning is Hard. All right, if you think self awareness is the only thing, so sorry, to, there's a bunch of you, so let's get a whole bunch of you in self awareness. If you think self awareness is the only thing to being conscious, a computer can access every single piece of its memory. All right, unlike you, there is nothing in a computer that a computer can't read. All right. Also, if you have a robot, now it depends how you build it. If it's a, your Lego robot, probably it's hopeless. <laughs> but if I, you, can, you can actually, sorry, not, not because of the way you build it, but I, I know what sensors. This is one of the big fights that all of us AI people had with the Lego sensor, right? They don't want to make it cost a lot. You can't have intelligence with lots and lots and lots of sensors. But a really nice robot, would, at every single motor, at every single place you could be in a different position, you can put in a kind of proprioception where you know exactly what angle the motor's at. Okay, so they have perfect self-awareness in terms of what have I ever seen? Actually, your video camera is that. <laughs> it can have perfect self-awareness about um, wh what am I doing right now, right? It probably can't have perfect self-awareness about all the social consequences and things like that. But um, you know, Google searches itself, so you could say Google is self-aware because it can return pages about Google. <laughs> all right. And it's certainly AI, it's certainly intelligent, it's senses when it acts, right? And, um, but in response to you, it doesn't have that executive thing we talked about. It, you make it go do something. I mean, it does crawl, actually. Um, I don't know if that's an automated script or somebody pushes a button once and says, go crawl the web. <laughs> but does anyone here work for Google? Last night there was a guy that worked for Google. We went up at the bar, we didn't get in. It was a huge problem. <laughs> 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 uh, so here we are. He was, he was a lovely guy. Anyway. Um, Robots can already learn, uh, although so far uh, we programmers, it's not the robot's fault, uh, haven't been very good at figuring out how to make them learn to learn. So they can't, they can't learn representations, but we can easily give them representations and they can fill in the blanks. Again, Google, excellent example of that, right? It can, it can learn what's on the web. It can just go read it and store it somewhere where it can access it very quickly. That is learning, right? Um, uh, and it can even use language to learn, so we can use culture. I don't want to keep bringing up Google, but you can use culture to figure out what's important. You can take that from others and focus your attention on the things. Uh, and I didn't put this in the list, but they have attention. Robots have a particular thing they're trying to do right now. They have a place they're looking at, they have a place they are physically, right? So they have attention. Um, but they don't need to suffer. Now this is a separate thing, and again, if you want, I have about seven pages, <laughs> seven slides on this too. Um, you could make a robot that if you told it it was stupid, it would feel bad and not uh, be as intelligent. All right? Which literally happens to people. You tell them you're, you're, you're inferior to your peers, and you could do some psych experiments. <laughs> it's getting warm in here, but I'll try. Uh, so this is the typical psychology experiment. You take a bunch of people in the room, like you guys, but pretend that you all thought you came here for a psych experiment. Um, and you say, okay, you all talk to each other, and then write on a piece of paper the three people, you all have names, tags on, write down the three people you want to work with, right? You take those pieces of paper, you throw them in the bin, you tell half the subjects that everybody wanted to work with you, and half the subjects you say, I'm sorry, nobody wanted to work with you. You give them an IQ test, 25 point difference out of 100. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, this is a short, hopefully, short term effect. <laughs> but the point is, for humans, dominance really matters. Social success really matters. And, and it's not just humans, it's the monkeys, it's the rats, it's the pigeons. If you're at the bottom of the pecking order, you know nobody likes you, and that makes you even less competent, which is, you know, it's a, it's a horrible uh, feedback system. We don't need to build that into a robot, but we could. All right? <laughs> So, uh, but, but we don't need to. All right, so that's why, it, that, so that, that's back to robot ethics. 
But anyway, the point is, don't forget, that's only necessary for moral patience. That's nothing to do, well, not nothing to do, but almost nothing to do with consciousness. In a robot, we can take these things apart. And maybe I didn't say that enough about those 11 things that those Annabelle's guys came up with. The point is that you can take these things apart and you can imagine building a system that had each of these things in separately. So now we can start talking about these things. All right, so I know what you, oh, I forgot. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. So yeah, so it's too self-aware, right? I, I think you guys are even back yet. That Skynet uh, starts thinking that it's cool to be thinking about itself, and, and so it becomes too self-aware, and there's there's no desire. Right. Um, anyway, so where are we? Are there any conscious robots? Do you guys think this robot is conscious? You can watch it for a while here. Mm -hmm. I, I know you guys want cute robot videos. I had to bring some. <laughs> I know you really wanted to bring a robot. I'm sorry. Well, it's going to be freaking, freaking skeptics. Does this thing look religious or what? <laughs> <laughs> so you think this robot is conscious? No. no, no. no. Uh, you figured out. It's just nothing. It, all it's doing right now is it's stress testing to see, uh, well, I didn't even, didn't even say it's doing anything. It is being run a program that checks to see how long it takes till the cable snap. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's just programmed that in. It doesn't sense anything. It's just it's just running through. Uh, you know, it's just like a lawnmower or something. You know, it's like nothing going on. But very, but very. This is how I got involved in robot ethics. Is because I worked for a robot that lived for I. <laughs> 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 Seriously, come on. If, you're, if you've been grad student, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that it looked less like a person than this, and it didn't even move. In fact, the processors weren't attached to the motors. The motors weren't plugged in. People would come around to see what I was doing, because you know I, I was I, I was a fairly well-known project at the time. Uh, it's called the Cog Project, if you like to do it. Yeah. The, um, and they would say, "Oh, it would be nice to go to unplug that," and I was like, "It's not plugged in." <laughs> <laughs> and it did work, then it would be enough to go and plug it. And I'm like, as far as I could tell, this thing was going to be stupid as a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and and my, because it was shaped like a person, people would be like, you guys are skeptics, you, you got the one. Okay, so let, let's try another one. Alright. Uh-oh, the sound. Sorry. Oh well. So she's actually talking to it. She said, turn on the switch, and it doesn't know what on means. And so now she's going to de demonstrate it. A little conversation here. Okay. okay. And now it's going to be deeply surprised because it has emotions. <gasps> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sorry you don't have the sound because I, I can't remember exactly what she said. She says all this stuff. Yeah, because I got the bleep, so it's my own fault. There's something I've done wrong on the video here. <laughs> but what she's trying to do is she's trying to teach it the concept of turning lights on and off. And it has to learn to generalize it. And the first thing it tries is rhyme. And you're going to see this where it does something and it thinks it's done what she's told. Because it has speech recognition. All right? And, and uh, she's going to say that she hasn't done the right thing and it's going to look really shocked and horrified. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now, now it's tried the thing, and now she's going to tell us right now. And then if we watch this video forever, she eventually got a third light and she'll really generalize what I want. Okay. This is Andreas Thomas. Oh, I should actually do this now. She, she, her, well, the robot is named Leonardo. It's the MIT. The, the ICUB was a huge, huge uh, European Commission project. Um, anyway, by the definition of what I gave you before, this is a conscious robot. Okay, not because it's cute and it has fluffy ears, <laughs> not because it has synthetic emotions, but because it's attending to only one thing at a time, and it's learning, right? So it has multiple possible actions it could do. It's probably getting multiple different perceptual streams. It's both hearing and seeing. And then it's choosing what to do next. There's basic action selection. So this met that those basic criteria I gave you of consciousness. 
I personally think as a skeptic, it's a lot more useful to say, look, what is attention doing for us? What is consciousness doing for us? Let's stop talking about, do you know, there's a guy who goes around, Owen Holland, going around saying he's going to build a conscious robot. <laughs> and he gets death threats. Fortunately, he's more famous than I am. <laughs> he gets death threats for trying to make conscious robots. Okay, that, to me, is not actually a good non-supernaturalist problem. Okay, I don't see any threat from Leonardo here. <laughs> but, but I'm happy to say that for what it is, the consciousness does for action selection that Leonardo might have it. Or does have it. Actually, let's just be simple about it. Let's be functionalist about it. To, you know, look, it, it learns, and it learns because it attends to the right step at the right time. Alright? So, I, I will actually say, there, this is another one. So, I'm sorry I don't have the video for this, but this robot, here, this guy's name is Charles Kemp. He's at Georgia Tech. They actually built those people at Georgia Tech now. They both used to be at MIT. Uh, but he was in the media, uh, he was the media, whatever, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that uh, he made a robot that was supposed to help paraplegics, so he's pretending to be paraplegic, he's actually just in the chair. Um, but he uses the, he uses the laser to go, uh, to point at what the robot should attend to, and then the robot goes and gets it. So in that case, the robot doesn't really have an attention, Charlie is providing the attention. But you could think of the entire system as a cognitive system with one focus of attention that's being provided by the human. All right, All right. so uh, again, I, I didn't see. I was told to talk for 45 minutes, which I have done almost perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, because we're going to have Q&A. But yeah, so my conclusion is robots are conscious. I do have more slides on request. I was also told I have to show you this. picture <laughs> 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 of me <laughs> and some other people. <laughs> is there, does anyone want to say anything about who's, who's up next or whatever? Okay. Yeah, you'll, you'll say, okay. And then, and then this is what I, the other slides I have, but we can just talk about what, what, what you want to talk about now, too. Okay. Okay, we okay, normally have a short Q&A now, so does anyone have any questions? Yeah. I'll start again with the same question I asked a minute ago. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so is that really all it takes to convince you that something is, is conscious? Because I can easily imagine both the processes of attention and of learning happening without consciousness. Right. That depends. Okay. Uh, now I have to go. Whoops. Sorry. Now I have to go back. When you say you can imagine attention and learning happening without consciousness, well, yeah, I can imagine that too. But it depends on how I would define consciousness. So this is something where I went, I went down and said, look, what is the most basic piece? And, and this is something, so my PhD was actually in something called action selection, which is the ongoing problem we all have about what to do next. You might say, well, what else is there to AI? But actually, most people in AI don't work on that. They most, well, anyway. The, um, there's a lot of different pieces of intelligence. And, and so the point was, I thought that if I worked on action selection sooner or later, like everyone, you know, consciousness is interesting, well, I did it. And I never hit it. And the more I read psychology papers, the more I saw, like I said, that the amount of stuff that you do unaware uh, that you, that's almost identical as when you are aware, right? You know this about driving, right? You can't even remember that you, you somehow did something incredibly complicated and dangerous, and all you were thinking about was that stupid phone call you had last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of thing that... that um, yeah, well, if you want, you can go and do the multiple drafts theory and done its multiple drafts theory and talk about that a little bit. But to me, this is the most essential thing that I've been able to find that really differentiates between when people report having had declarative memory that... So, th so the main thing that we think about consciousness, and this is something I have to say, can you talk about it? If you were aware of something, then you're able to talk about it. So there's some... That goes back to the language. Now, now it doesn't have to be talking. There are rats. Okay, this goes back to some surgery stuff, too. All right, do you, have you guys heard of HM? There was, a, there was an unfortunate guy who had really bad epilepsy. And, he, uh, and they took out part of his brain that was, that was doing the short-circuiting, which is epilepsy. And he could no longer remember anything new. He could remember old stuff. And actually, it turned out, well, so I'll do, I'll do this with history. So they looked, why he said he couldn't remember things, but they thought he couldn't remember anything. He, could, he couldn't learn who his doctors were. Um, but uh, they, so they thought, ah, this is, this is the key to memory. It's called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is where it, what consolidates memory. So you've had an experience. He can talk to you briefly, but if he got distracted, he totally forgot what just happened before that. So he could be in the moment, but he couldn't have this past. So they said, great. And they started ripping hippocampuses out of rats, 
and I'm throwing them into mazes because that's what you do with rats, and the rats are fine. They learn new mazes. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so then, seriously, it was the 80s. I was just like, so that you would read these papers. I said, well, in humans, it does memory, and in rats, it does something strange with mazes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and nobody could figure out, because the other, I shouldn't say about mazes, I, I got slightly confused about that. One of the main things they tried to teach the rats was how to press buttons, you know, like a light would flash and you you'd press a button, and it could do that. They could learn all these tasks. But the thing it couldn't do was this thing called the Morris Milk Maze, which is you throw a rat in a swimming pool and it has to swim around until it finds the platform it can stand on. All right, and it has to learn where that platform is. And for whatever reason, rats swim really well, but they hate it. <laughs> and so so they, you can really tell that when they've learned it, they've learned it because they swim right to the, to the platform. All right. So it couldn't learn the maze, the rats couldn't learn the maze, but generally they seem to be able to learn things push buttons. Finally, one day, after decades, after I already had my psych degree, someone thought, oh, let's give HM uh, one of the things the rats seem to be able to learn. So they give him this device and say, look, oh, when the light comes on, push the button. He's like, yeah, okay, he's people. Actually, he said, you can't get bored when you, with my problem, actually. He, he did, he did crosswords all day and he did it my day. So it's one of the good things. But anyway, he, he was very friendly. He was willing to do this, so he's like, yeah, okay. So they, they uh, he would push, the flight would go on, he pushed the button, they did this a few times, you know, he got these rewards. Uh, then they distract him. They say, uh, you know, count your pennies that you've gotten for your rewards. I mean, it wasn't a very big reward. And then they and then they'd say, okay, do you remember who I am? No. Do you remember what this device is? No. Why goes on, he pushes the button. Why did you do that? I don't know. Okay. So apparently you don't need consciousness to learn how to do that. But what was going on with those rats? It turns out, similarly with rats, um, they can't, like, this is another complicated maze, a maze that has eight arms, and you can't go them down them in a pattern because little doors are <coughs> But, well, it's like eight places you can look. And they could, they, rats, without the hippocampus, act like they can't remember what they just did, just like HM acted, okay? So that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's language that's necessary, but in humans, since we have language, if you can't describe it, you probably weren't conscious of it. And so if you can't describe you know, what cars you just went by and, and, and what, which route you took home, then you probably weren't conscious of thriving. Right. So that, sorry, that was an incredibly long answer. <laughs> but my point, my point is that if that's the critical piece, then I'm happy to say, well, that's the critical piece, yes. But there's a lot more to the wonder of intelligence and, and, and souls and things like that than, than just that. And that's what I'm trying to get at. Yes? To what extent is artificial intelligence or consciousness whatever we can't get a rebel to do yet? <laughs> <laughs> that goes back to that slide I said. People really, really want it to be something you can't do. And that's why I think it would be better, again, from a skeptical perspective, to get people thinking of something more. Um, but that, yeah, that's the same thing with AI. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I cannot believe the number of seriously good AI people I've seen that say Google is not intelligent, or Google cars that drive around on time, so that's not real intelligence. Like, what? Of course that's intelligence. It's not human, like, I didn't want to say human level. You know, do you guys see IBM Watson? I, I, yeah. I, I just figured deals in Americans since they're British, because you don't understand what a really big deal Jeopardy is. <laughs> like, that's like, it's like better than chess, okay? And, and, and the fact that they can do natural language and they can, it's like, it's like cryptic crosswords too, they're like the, pun, the puns and stuff. That thing could do better than humans, right? Okay? So it's above human level intelligence at solving stupid Jeopardy quizzes, right? But it doesn't want to fall in love. It doesn't want to take over the world. It probably can't even do arithmetic. No, it probably can't. But, but it can't. There's a lot of tasks. It can't drive, right? There's a lot of basic things that humans can do, but there's no reason to build that in. And it's just like, you know, if you showed a pocket calculator, let alone your mobile phone, but if you showed a pocket calculator to someone 100 years ago, they, they probably would have had a complete, you know, crisis of faith or something. Oh my gosh, there's a machine doing math. You know, humans, only humans do math, right? All these little pieces, if, if you have to keep saying, this is, this, okay, now I'm going to start sounding like a, a preacher or something, but if it, you know, this thing about the God of the gaps, if what it is to be human is to have all these stupid little milestones, that's not going to be enough. So we're going to have to think harder about what we want to do, and this does go back to the robot ethics thing. What, what do we want to have obligation towards? What do we value as a society? Gentlemen, die at height. Oh, good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I answered one or two of the reports <laughs> that I was going to make, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, <laughs> the, the thought I had to use um, 
the consciousness is the is the, the general theme again. Yeah. But you also use the word intelligence. Yeah. Um, as, as apparently as an aspect of consciousness. Um, no. Well, it, 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 it's a, okay, it looks that way, maybe we'll uh, yeah. talk about um, Maybe it's a precondition for consciousness. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As you were saying, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, okay. so, yeah, one of the things. It's one of the things. One of the things that we expect of a consciousness, I suppose. Yeah. Well, you and can't learn. Like, I, sorry. sorry, I don't think you can learn if you're. I said that consciousness is about learning and about mm. choosing between things. And so, yeah, I guess if you don't have intelligence, you can't do those things. Yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's a, so a yeah. precursor. Pre yeah, precursor. But it's, it's, it's kind of. I don't know. I think you probably want to read a new word, not consciousness. Yeah, that's uh, actually. That, so that's that's really. Th because everybody here has their own special, different version of consciousness, I suspect, of what we would like to think. Well, they may all be very similar, but, uh, but that's not being telepathic, I can't That's tell. exactly yeah. why That's but, exactly why I do those kind of things. Yeah, but yeah. to actually define those terms scientifically, um, and to break it down as you have, yeah. um, I think you, you make something that it doesn't look like what I imagined it to be. Or <laughs> um, yeah. even define intelligence. Well, well, only well, that, that's, that's Stuart Rich um, will be doing that on the 23rd. <laughs> 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 uh, this time, 8.30 on the 23rd, um, we'll be here. Oh, well, yeah, 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 23rd of August, Stuart Rich will be defining intelligence. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? Here. Yeah. Oh, right. At 8.30, here, um, here, and um, also coming on the other ones too. But, um, <laughs> Definitely bring up the whole thing about the IQ produced by 25 points. Yes. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, I define, I define intelligence from one line, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, something yeah, actually, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you haven't mentioned free will. No, I haven't. <laughs> 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 I still don't do free will. <laughs> There were some experiments by this guy Libet in the 1970s that looked at a brain and it established that the brain was uh, making a decision before you consciously knew that that was happening. Okay, uh, um, going back to you knew that research. Yeah, if you uh, go, going back to the action selection thing, or remember the consciousness mm -hmm. slide where I said that you aren't conscious, I mean, nothing in you is conscious, you are as a whole. The stuff that they're picking up there is part of the conscious process, right? So you're, it's literally your brain works. One of the things it does when it's making an action selection is it's gathering evidence. There's a bunch of different hypotheses about how what would be the next best action, and it's gathering it. The fact that you can go in there and read those neurons and, and guess ahead which one is probably going to pass the threshold first, most of the time, enough times to get a science paper, um, <laughs> which is only like whatever five, you know, ninety-five percent of the time, right? The fact that you can do that doesn't mean that you're really it, that that your brain is decided before you're conscious. That was just part of the whole process. But although, like I said, you don't necessarily consider the reaction you do, which I like, I just cut off my thought. But was saying from that experiment that free will was basically all we could do in a free will way was, was to actually stop ourselves from doing things rather than start out. Stop doing Actually, a whole lot of the frontal lobes, which is the main thing that we have that chimpanzees don't, is about inhibiting action. Right? Exactly. So giving yourself enough time, again, to learn, I think, to be aware. So I think inhibition is a very fundamental part of consciousness. Um, you're, you're, you, you could act, but you're not going to until, it's, until you've given enough time to, uh, to, to consider other possibilities. And, the, and the, remember I mentioned a reaction time. So the amount of time you give is proportional to uncertainty you about what you should have done next. <laughs> so I think, I think that's what's actually going on. I think it's sort of like a searchlight that you, you know that you're not sure about what's happening, so you're going to spend more time be, being, uh, learning about the regularities that happen in that situation. Um, so yeah. what would a robot look like that had free will? <laughs> and this is like we should start over again. So what, would it, what, what do you think free will is? <laughs> I, my, my, I hate free will. You want? Uh, uh, you're asking a question or you're just waiting? I was telling our IVM C that was five minutes left. <laughs> but okay, so we have time for one more question and I'll plug some okay. stuff. Is that okay? You, you have I did, but then I thought, hang on, I might have tripped over the logic in my head and I'll look stupid if I asked it. So what I'd like to do is not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> free will in action! <laughs> okay, so it's not directly related to consciousness, but it was. Uh, you, 
you made a, a comment, might have been a slip of the tongue, about iCub in uh, the yeah. past tense. Does that mean the project was scrapped by the... Oh, gosh, no. No, okay. Uh, the iCub, the... the um, the, yeah, sorry about doing the past tense. I was one of the reviewers on the iCub project, uh, and it was a five-year project in order to get the iCub built. Now the the uh, sorry IIT to me is the Illinois Institute of Technology, but in Europe it's the Italian Institute of Technology, and in Genoa uh, this has become their flagship uh, object. And so there there's I believe 35 of them in Europe. Last I knew. They keep, they keep producing them, it is the European standard cognitive robot. <laughs> so, lots of, so the idea is that lots of universities can, can all have identical robots and they can check to see if their cognitive systems, their, their theories and stuff really work. In, in practice it's never quite that easy, but that's the idea. So yeah, no, this was an ongoing project. I was just speaking in past tense about the process when I was involved with. Okay, I think that's all questions we've got time for. We will be in the dark. Yeah.